DFB Paint Week 10 preview. Uh, excited to get back into it. This will be posted on like a Thursday, we think, something like that. Um, but time stamping this, we're recording this Monday night, again, 1030. So injury updates may have changed. Lines may have shifted here and there. This isn't gambling advice anyway. If you follow us, you're probably losing money. So uh, so all, bear all that in mind, right? But we want to be accountable to our picks and, and how things have gone. But before we get into it, again, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, follow us on socials, all the things that help support us and, and help us be part of the college football conversation along with yourselves. We appreciate all the support. Uh, Corey, before we get into a week preview, a couple things that we wanted to do, like we mentioned on our last episode, we wanted to do a conference race check-in. I figure maybe we start there, uh, and from there we can talk about how um, how that maybe you know how the games that are going to be played out this weekend are going to play into some of these conference races. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I've just got ESPN pulled up in terms of like um, you know, where we can take a quick look at uh, you know the, these conference races, and maybe I'll try and make this as large as possible on that screen. Um, the American Athletic Conference, I think it really boils down to about five teams here. You've got Tulane, I think the heavy favorites, seven and one overall, only losses to Ole Miss, and their starting quarterback, Michael Pratt, didn't play in that game. Uh, the SMU Mustangs looking to uh, go out with a bang in the American Athletic Conference as they are set to join the ACC next year. UTSA, 4 0 in conference after a really rocky uh, non conference. Uh, slate um so they're, they're a contender memphis tigers and the florida atlantic owls really those are the five teams that have sort of started to separate themselves Corey, i don't know if you want to repick maybe are we are we going to just like quickly repick who we think yeah i think that's this? fine it would sure. do that it was like a fun one well who do you got in the american i think i have the who i who i originally picked is, is tulane there's a reason i have them on my win total team um they looked impressive although they they play with fire. They keep teams close right now, and, and but they seem to keep winning. So, if anybody that can upset them, though, it's SMU. SMU got you know with uh, Brett Lashley and and is basically Miami contingent that have come over with him <laughs> uh, are, are impressive, and they're starting to click. So it, it, that, that's a team that scares me from a Tulane perspective, but I think Tulane can win it. So I think that's my pick. I think they go on they win on their way out of the conference they are looking very impressive in the last few weeks and so i expect them to continue that trend so uh my mid season it's not even mid it's beyond the midpoint of the season it's like two-thirds of the way through the season yeah. i might choose the smu mustangs let's move on to the acc this is the one that we talked about for a little bit look at this log jam right here of what is that one two that's six teams with two Jeez. losses well, one undefeated team in Florida State, two teams with one loss who happen to play each other this next week. So uh, whoever wins that game, obviously, then it becomes uh, then it becomes, uh, I guess, more likely that there's a, a match between uh, whoever wins the winner of that and Florida State. But the, the loser of that joins this jumbled mess and no one's really out of it yet. Louisville still has to play. Uh, they still have to play. Miami, they still have to play. Oh goodness, now I'm going to blank on who else they play in in the conference here. Um, I can open that in a separate tab. But um, Virginia Tech obviously plays Louisville. Then they have to play uh, Virginia, Boston College, and NC State. So a couple of those teams that are in that two loss bit. Corey, how do you see the ACC shaking out? I think if Florida State wins this weekend, they pretty much secure a bid they, into the. They do clinch, yeah. If they yeah, win. So I think Florida State is going to go, and I think this Louisville team is good, and I think they they end up going as well. My one caveat is if Miami ends up beating Florida State and Louisville, they could get in there. Um, they, but I, they I control picking, their own destiny. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, but I expect I'm expecting Florida State to play Louisville in the championship, and honestly, I hope Florida State wins. But I don't know. I wonder what that lie would be. Probably like seven. FSU seven and a half. Yeah, I would say yeah. seven and a half. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm not an odds maker, but that would be my like shooting from the hip. What I think the the spread might be yeah. between those two. Yeah, I, I don't know if I trust Louisville here. 
I think they're going to lose at least two. Mm. Um, you think that, who I do you think, think they lose to? So they, I think they lose at Miami, right? I think it's possible. And then, sorry, I've got the, let's pull up their schedule right here. So I've got it on a separate tab here. So yeah. they play Virginia Tech, Virginia, oh, and at Miami. So oh, that's it. I, I didn't realize they have a okay. Um, maybe it is Louisville. Maybe it's Louisville. I I see them losing that Miami game. That puts them at two losses, and then they're in that mix. And then who? comes out of it with Miami having a head to head. Yeah, if Miami but, but beats it becomes them. a garbled mess because Miami might have one or two. Uh, granted their losses, Miami's losses are to North Carolina who I don't think is done losing and to Georgia Tech who I don't think is done losing. So I, I might pick Miami. Yeah. I guess they're going to lose to Florida State. They're going to lose to Florida State, huh? They, or, might, or they, they, they play might. Florida State. I should I, 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 say, State, I should yeah. say they play Florida State. Um I was thinking if they just played Louisville and then had, you know, kind of sort of afterthoughts in the race, they probably feel, or they're probably in a place where they can do it. Maybe it's the Cardinals. Maybe they've set themselves up. I'll, I'll choose the Cardinals versus the Seminoles. And if I'm, you know, I'm an FSU fan, I'm okay with that matchup. I feel okay with that one. I, but that to me is like, all right, you, you should go into that ACC title game with reasonable expectations to, to win that and potentially get into the playoff. Big 12, we talked about the the ACC being a tangled mess. Uh, the Big 12 is just the same way where you have five so. teams. Yeah, even more so. Now, the, the nice thing is, is with Week 10, you will get some clarity uh, pretty quickly here. You have, of the five, four, and one teams in conference, four of them are playing one another, right? You have the Oklahoma-Oklahoma State matchup. And then you have Kansas State visiting Texas. Um, so you're, you're going to get some clarity from those. Iowa State on the road at BYU. Maybe is sitting at, in first place in the conference at the end of the week. I guess, I, you know. Perhaps but, at the end of the week, but not by the end of the year because they play Texas and yeah. Kansas State at the end of the finish yeah, of the year. Yeah, they, 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 they're, they're a little backloaded. But um, who do you got in the Big 12 conference game or conference championship game as, as of week nine? Um, whoever the whoever, whoever the winner of Bedlam is is going to get out with it with going to get into the championship. Yeah. Oklahoma State schedule after playing Oklahoma, they basically have the newcomers: Houston, UCF, BYU. Uh, Oklahoma has West Virginia, BYU, and TCU. So neither team should lose. Um, I have Oklahoma and Texas in a rematch. Um, but Texas Kansas State game that's going to determine the other other person and. I think Texas's defense can put a shutout or can kind of like put the clamps on on Kansas State, but we'll see. Yeah, I you make a really good point that that Oklahoma Oklahoma State game is like almost a de facto playing game. We're gonna say this, and then there's gonna be like chaos in the last three weeks. And oh, of course, of drop, course, it's never how it should be. At, at this at this stage, let me couch it a little bit more. At this stage, it looks like it should be a play game. If you win that, you have to be feeling really good about your chances to to get through unscathed. But um, that's college football always has has different uh, plans in mind. Uh, I will go ahead and choose. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with the same matchup that I I've got Oklahoma and I've got Texas playing in that conference championship game. Um, and I got Texas winning a rematch again. Still, I'm, I'm doubling down uh, on the Longhorns here. So uh, I, I think I picked Oklahoma to win the Big Twelve against Texas. I, I think that's not going to happen. I think Texas is a better team. That it matters, or that depends on when Quinn Ewers comes back, though. That so. is true. That, yeah, I, I have that baked in that he's he's back for that game. So an important yeah. caveat to know. I there. still think Texas, yeah, wins the rematch. They were the more impressive team, and the only reason Oklahoma was able to run the ball is because Gabriel. Also decided he could sneak through little tiny holes everywhere. Um, so yeah, it'll it'll be another Herculean performance from him if that's if that's the case. Yeah. On to the Big Ten, um, where the East. I, we talked about this last episode, so I, I don't know if we need to really recap too much of this one. The East is boiling down to Michigan and Ohio State yet again. Um, so uh, we'll we'll go back and say take your pick on those two in just a minute. Uh, the West is far more interesting when it comes to the, the number of options that are available. Really, you only have Purdue and 
Illinois that have really kind of, I, I don't know if they've been statistically eliminated, but it, it sure looks like they're not going to win it. But there is a path where Northwestern wins the, wins the Big Ten West, which is wild. Um, as far as my choice, I, I'm taking Nebraska out of the West. That's funny. That's just the so, first to take. Oh, yeah? I'm yeah, just yeah. Like, it's so crazy that I'm saying that, you know, after the first couple of weeks of the season, it was like, man, Nebraska fans have seen this movie uh, so many times, and it looked like it was going to play out again. Uh, they're working around some of their deficiencies. They're winning a fair amount of games. And here's the part that's really, I think, is pretty neat, is that the rest of their schedule is the following. Uh, at Michigan State, not exactly a formidable opponent right now. Home against Maryland, who looks worse every single week. At Wisconsin for the ball, uh, or no, I guess not for the Paul Bunyan Trophy, excuse me. That's, that's uh, Wisconsin, and, um, Wisconsin and Minnesota. I, I think I saw them both on the... Uh, on the screen there and just anyway at wisconsin so you're in madison that's not an easy one home against iowa in a game that will probably be about 13 to 9 will probably be the final score there um, yeah i think that iowa nebraska game at the end of the year may be the de-, de facto who represents the west and since you're picking, picking nebraska i'm gonna go with iowa even though brian for instance isn't gonna you know be the oc anymore i'm gonna pick iowa to, they play Illinois, they play Northwestern, and then they also play Rutgers uh, to close out their season in, in addition to Nebraska. It, might, it may be a slightly easier schedule than Nebraska. They don't play the Wisconsin Badgers, but they do play Rutgers, who's been pretty good. So I'm picking that's Iowa true. there. That's true. That's, a, that's a, a fair point. The other one I considered was potentially Wisconsin. Um, they're at Indiana, home versus Northwestern, home versus Nebraska at Minnesota. Um so I mean they're they're gonna be they're gonna have a say in that, but it's just fun that that race is is almost no clearer than when everyone had zeros in both the wins exactly. and losses. Yeah. Um. I I don't know anything about Conference USA, but I'm picking. Wait, wait, wait. We got pick the killing everyone. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, Michigan. Yeah. So my thought process is Michigan wins the big game, but I think the Big Ten does not let Michigan play in the championship game. Wow. That's what, what I think. Say that. Huh. Do you, I think do you the have Big Ten like... is going to make make a ruling based off of this uh, off this cheating scandal way before the NCA is going to, and I think there's going to be some reprimands to this. Um, no inside t- tells, no nothing, but there's. It feels like the teams are clamoring for it. It feels like the fans are clamoring for there to be more than a slap on the wrist, and I think the Big Ten may have the chance to step up and say, you know what, you don't deserve this, and they're going to let Ohio State play in the game. I can't imagine what would happen. I think they're that would be crazy. I'm, if I'm the Big Ten, I do it because it. It's, like, it sets myself up to have two teams in the championship. I have an undefeated Michigan, and then I have a a Pac-10 champion in Ohio State. Or mm, Big Ten, sorry, champion in Ohio State. Maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, the, I guess the fear, if you were to do that, I don't think that happened. I don't think there's a way like, that they would ever do something that dr- drastic. But... Um, if you were to do that, I think you were, you would set a bad precedent for the playoff committee, who'd then say, "Okay, well, if they're not eligible for that, then they're not eligible for our thing too." Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, no, I've got I've got Michigan winning the East and and winning the conference amid controversy. Um, conference USA. I, again, I've followed. I've watched a, a handful of games. You know, I've, they've had a, lots of like the midweek games, so I've like turned on the second halves when I'm like done with work and done with dinner and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this is liberties to win, right? Like, it is. It's liberties to win. It's liberties to lose. But Jacksonville State Gamecocks in their first year up in up in, uh, at this level has been impressive. I think Rich Rod is the co- coach yeah. there, mm-hmm. and they play well, career renaissance for Rich Rod. Yeah, and they have the uh, they have the Gamecocks that they play this week. So it'll South be a Gamecock Carolina, Square yeah. game, which mm-hmm. is kind of fun to watch. So. <laughs> Not a, not a common uh, common nickname, and yet you got both of them playing. Skipping over the Independents, the Mac. I I don't know. I I'll admit I have not followed the Mac closely at all this year. Um, I looking at this Ohio seems to be fading. Um, Miami has done well, but they did lose their QB for the year. So who knows what what happens there? 
Uh, I will go ahead and choose the Red Hawks out of the East. I don't know if you have anything else. I, I think I'm I'm going to go with uh, the Bills. The Bulls. Right. Wow, Bulls. Oh. Bills. The Buffalo Bills. Yeah. I know, in my head I was like, <laughs> Buffalo Bills. <laughs> um, Toledo has flirted with disaster a couple times, but... Um, I've picked Toledo to cover quite a few times this week, this year, and they have not covered a single time. They've won, but they have not covered every time <laughs> I picked them, so... So, um, I still think they they take the West and they take the conference. So they're the class of the conference. All right, I I can get on board with that. I'll go ahead and, and ride your coattails there. Uh, from that one to the Mountain West, I did not realize the Mountain West did away with divisions. I I was not aware of that. Um, this, uh, yeah, I I feel you've got two teams here. UNLV is having a great season. I I, I don't know if they're really a a, a legitimate contender. Uh, this boils down to Air Force and Fresno, and for me, I mean, have they played this year? Now I'm curious. I, I don't. Air Force again, and Fresno. I don't think they have. I'm pulling it up. They do not play this year in the regular season, um, so they will have to meet in the conference title game. Now UNLV can potentially throw a wrench in this. They do play. Air Force, they play them on the road. And like Air Force is hosting them in the second to last week of the year, but it is on. It's a week after Air Force goes to Hawaii, and that's quite the quite the travel, quite the you know the the plane ride. So I will take. Give me the Air Force Falcons and the Fresno State Bulldogs to play in the title game, and I think Fresno State Bulldogs take Mountain West. This Air Force team is impressive. Uh, they're going to go undefeated. They're going to go to a. Uh, they're going to go to a, a, a group six or whatever the uh, the the, New the Year's six bowl. New Year's six bowls. Yeah, nice. Um, That'd be awesome. I, I would love I to see a service academy. They've make been it. impressive. That's, that's they look good in their games. Their defenses look sound. And the the other problem is is UNLV and Boise State both play. Boise State still has to play both Fresno State and Air Force, so they'll drop out of this. And UNLV still plays. Uh, still has to play. Uh, Air Force. Uh, Air Force. And then they also have a Wyoming and San Jose State. So they're not kind of set up in positions to catch these two teams, um, even though they both have one loss. It's Fresno State that has a more favorable schedule. And so it's going to be Air Force Fresno. But Air Force is going to win. All right. Well, let's see and we're going to see a military out. school in a New Year's Day Six Bowl. That'd be fun Love to watch. Love it. I, yeah. Sign me up for that. I know it probably, probably wouldn't go their way, I don't think. Yeah, you know, I don't obviously care. you'd have to look at the ma- matchup, but it, it's like what an accomplishment for them. Yeah. Um, on to the Pac-12, where we've got Washington as the lone undefeated team, both overall and in conference. Uh, the two others that are, are are in prime position to participate in that: USC Trojans, the Oregon Ducks. Uh, this one to me is is pretty open and shut. It's really, I think Oregon is going to win out and that will give them one of the spots in the title game. I think it really boils down to who wins between Washington and USC this next week. Um, and I preview of our picks, I, give me the Huskies. I think we get a rematch of that awesome game that took place in Seattle a couple weeks ago, uh, this time in Las Vegas uh, to the side of the Pac-12. Washington finishes the year with a gauntlet of a schedule. They have to play, USC, Utah, and Oregon State. But the problem is, is USC also finishes with a gauntlet of a schedule. They have to play Washington, Oregon, and then UCLA. Um, for that reason, give me the Ducks and, and Washington as well. Um, and I'm taking the Washington to win that game. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to take the Ducks to win that game. Uh, the, we I... talked earlier in this year about tiers, and it's kind of proven too, true. The only team that's kind of broken through this tier right now that we're seeing is Arizona. Arizona was not expected to be in the top six teams. They were kind of expected to be like in the bottom. You had We thought it would be like, oh, it would be Oregon, USC, Washington, Utah. We thought Cam Rising might come back. Um, UCLA yeah. and, and and Oregon State. Well, Arizona's sitting up there with three and two, and they've got a – I think they have a pretty favorable schedule coming up as well. Yeah, they play UCLA this week at Colorado, home against Utah. UCLA is at home, by the way. Uh, Home against Utah and then at Arizona State. So they probably uh, cross that at least two more conference wins. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. 
I think they could, you know, they could get frisky and, and, and make things interesting in a couple of those other games. They've got they've got some talent on that team. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I think we see that, that one the same. Uh, maybe this is one where we, again, like we're, we're kind of projecting this out, but it's also maybe is, is showing some of what we think is going to play out the rest of the year um, and, and including this week where you've got some big matchups in the Southeastern Conference to decide some of these races. Uh, Georgia 5-0 and o in the East. Really the only real threat to them at this point is Missouri, um, mm-hmm. unless things get crazy. Missouri, if they were to beat the Bulldogs and they play them this week, they're 15 uh, they're, point dogs that game, by the way. Yeah, yeah, they have to go travel to Athens as well. Um, but if they were to win that game, they then control their own destiny in in the SEC East. Could could then win out and and have the head to head versus Georgia. Uh, on the other side of the conference, you have Alabama as five and zero oh in conference with a major game against LSU this week in Tuscaloosa. The Old Miss Rebels are sitting at four and one in conference. The one loss is to the Crimson Tide. Is that right? I'm yes. Questioning. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. no, yeah. it's not to Crimson Tide. It's to uh. El- oh, yeah. they, no, they, they lost to Alabama. They lost yeah. to Alabama twenty four ten in the yeah, fourth week of the year. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, but and then so they're kind of in the mix there, but they're going to need some help. Um, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing. Apologies. There, there we go. Um. How, how do you see the East and West plan? How, how, how do you sh- how are you sorting out the Southeastern Conference? Um, like you said, this is probably showing our cards because the two top two teams, the best two teams in each conference, play this weekend. Play each other. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Georgia and LSU are going to end up playing each other. I think in the SEC title game, I think LSU ends up knocking off Alabama. I think their offense is better than uh, Bama's defense, and they're able to score enough points to, to win that game. So they'll own the head to head. Now the only question is, is do they stumble like they did last year against A and M or Florida? Not likely. So I'm picking LSU. Yeah, um, I am going to take the Tide to win the division. Um, and well, yeah, I I think just between those three, LSU, there's there's at least one loss there, right? Like, so it, yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be this week. But I think there's at least one loss and, and two losses in the conference puts you out of the race. Um, and that gives, if that's the case, again, whether or not it's directly to Alabama that LSU loses, that gives them some wiggle room because they can lose one and still have the tiebreaker over Ole Miss. So give me a Bama-Georgia final. For the Ole Miss SEC is going to play Georgia later this year. They're going to lose to Georgia. So that kind of almost eliminates them. LSU only plays Florida and A&M after this. And Bama plays Kentucky and Auburn. So both teams should be favored in their last two games. And mm-hmm. I, I, I honestly don't – I think they both finished out their last games probably undefeated. Or, sorry, not without another loss. So I think this is the, probably the, the, the game that means the most. Yeah, it, it, it for sure does. That's, you know, that, that's, that's, that's certainly the case. It, it's the one that – if you were to say where's the most likely loss, this is – this is the one that circled for both teams. So, yeah. but I'm going to choose Bama. I think Bama comes out of the West. I think Georgia comes out of the East. Another classic uh, Saban protege versus Saban showdown. Although Kirby's got the the best of them the last two times they've played. Um, so, I, give me the the Bulldogs to once again rise to the occasion and beat the Tide in Atlanta. Yeah, they're going to smash them. To be honest. Yeah. Do we want to do – let's do the Sun Belt. It's our last one, huh? Why not? Um, to me, this is kind of open and shut. I, I, I don't know how you feel about this. James Madison is the class of the conference, but they can't win it, right? They're not eligible. Uh, Georgia Southern won a huge game over Georgia State this last week. So I think the Eagles are coming out of the East. I think that puts them against Troy. Unless James Madison's eligible for this but isn't eligible for a bowl, I might be wrong on that. I don't think they are eligible for this either, but I'm not sure. Okay. Either way, it's dumb. They should be both. They, they really should be the favorite to win the entire conference. Um, otherwise, assuming that they're not, I think it's Georgia Southern and Troy. And, you know, I'm a Troy boy. Give me the Trojans to win the Sun Belt. Again, that's with the caveat that as this assumes that James Madison isn't eligible. Otherwise, my pick changes to JMU. Yeah. I'm interested to see here because Georgia Southern and – they have one game on on Georgia State, Coastal Carolina, Old Dominion, and I'm looking at who they finish with. They play Texas State, which Texas State has been 
surprisingly good this year, but they're not. Yeah, yeah they they're have, on the other side of the but, conference. Mm-hmm. And Marshall started off the season really well and then struggled in conference. They play at ooh. Old Dominion and App State. Yeah. Yeah, give me, give me a, yeah, Georgia, Georgia, give me a Georgia Southern. I want to actually let, let me see Georgia State real quick. I'll look at there. Yeah, there. while you're while you're pulling that up, I had Georgia State covering the spread versus Georgia Southern this last week. Yeah, that was a mistake. Definitely uh, didn't happen. Georgia Southern uh, took took care of that. They were actually really impressive. It was within like two possessions that I was like, okay. I was watching that game. I was like, they are winning on the lines of scrimmage, and this is not going to go well. Um, so yeah, it give seemed me Georgia, pretty apparent give early me Georgia on. Georgia Southern and you know what? Give me Texas State out of the out of that group. Oh, the Bobcats. Yeah, they've they've blown expectations out of the water. Let's we'll see if they can do it. You know, to finish the year. They sure have. Um, their head coach is what's his name? G. J. Kinney. Am I getting that right? Yeah, G.J. Kinney, um, yeah, has done a phenomenal job so far um, with with uh, that program and turning around and, and in short order. So um, impressive work there from the Bobcats. Would love to see that. I think that's, I mean, I'm a Troy boy, but like just that story and what they've been able to accomplish in such a short time is very impressive at Texas State. So that'd be, that'd be cool for them if they were able to do that. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Um, so there's the, the conference recap. I know it took us oh, a lot longer than I thought it would. Sorry. Um, let's just jump we'll right fast. in. Let's we'll talk. Of us. What? So we'll be fast. Yeah, fast, we'll be. Two of us. All right. Sounds good. So with it just being two of us, uh, we're not going to do like a full win totals draft recap. Corey, do you want to give us just a real quick summary on how everyone did this last week? Yeah. Um, I went, let's see. I've got to pull it up real quick. Um, I went seven and three with losses from Clemson, North Carolina, and Maryland. Some some kind of crazy losses. Steve wins the week at seven and one, with only loss from Oregon State. Mark goes five and two with losses for Utah and Wisconsin, and Brian goes five and three, his worst week of the year, oh. um, with Oklahoma, West, Western Kentucky, oh, and Ohio oh, losing. Brian sits at sixty seven wins. Mark sits at sixty two, and Steve and I sit at sixty one. Our games remaining. Brian has played. Oh, so Mark. Sorry, Steve has played the most. He has thirty-eight games remaining. Mark uh, or Brian has thirty-nine, and then Mark and I have forty. So I have a chance to catch Steve, and we might have a double repeat as a loser. Hopefully, gosh, we we're coming. I'm coming up with a, be severe. Yeah, I'm coming up with a punishment, and it's not going to be fun. All right, I've been like mulling over some options, and I've got some good ones. So, oh goodness. All right. Well, all right. Thanks for that kind of quick peek into our win totals draft um we will go through uh now we're going to go through um our picks from last week again just being accountable to everyone uh, as of for last week against the just like straight up the 19 games that we picked just outcome who wins not by how much or um against the spread Corey, you went 13 and 6 uh, Brian and I both went 15 and four. Um, so just kind of heads up on on where we're at there. Do we want to be? Maybe we go into this week's picks and then we go against the the, the number after that, right? That's fine. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Let me just pull up so I've got Brian's information as we go through to this week's picks. I, um, I put them as, in the in the in the thing as well. Already. Oh, you've got them right there. I, yep. I, that's right. Sure. Thank you. All right. So we'll go, and these aren't necessarily in chronological order. We just dropped them in, so apologies for that. But um, we'll go uh, Florida State versus Pitt. Corey, how do you see this one playing out? Um, did anybody see what uh, Pat Narduzzi said about his team oh, last week? We should have had. I just didn't get didn't replace my good players with good players, or kind of something like that. I didn't replace my my players that left for the NFL or other teams with good players, and some other players and some former players like retweeted this he's issued an apology issued a, a tweet saying it was all my fault we lost the players apparently said he per per him the players have said they're good but this team's not good four states trouble winning. in paradise yeah yeah it's i'm sorry I, I, would you say floor state's gonna win yeah four state dominates this game yeah yeah i've, I've got fsu as well so it's a, a clean sweep brian also chose fsu uh, in that matchup 
All right, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, Ohio State goes to Rutgers, second straight road game for Ohio State, second straight road game also coming off of that big win over Penn State. Rutgers on extra rest, had a bye week last week. Does Greg Schiano and the boys, do they have something for the Buckeyes, Corey? I want to say yes, but I'm going to say no. They don't. I'm sorry. Oh, this Ohio State defense is going to limit them to like 14, 17 points total. So. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing when I looked at this. Like, Is there a path for an upset here? I just don't see them scoring many points. And, you know, they, they've had a great year. They're bowling. Good, good for the Scarlet Knights. Uh, I've got Ohio State in this one as well. And that makes a clean sweep. Brian, again, unable to join us this, this go around, has also picked Ohio State to win that game. Uh, shifting gears to the Big 12, where you've got uh, the reigning Big 12 champion, Kansas State, traveling to Austin to take on the Longhorns uh, and, and hopefully give uh, the Longhorns a little boot in the butt on their way out of the conference. I'll go first on this one. This game is... To me, this wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought this game would be particularly interesting if Quinn Ewers was healthy and playing. Right? I, I would have Texas winning. They're at home, and I'd have them winning. I think fairly comfortably. I think I've got them winning by north of ten. I don't know what the line is um, in four. this game. I think it's like five and a half. Is it four? It's four according to uh, Caesar Sportsbook. So let me see what I've got on DraftKings. Wow. Or what... I mean. That's that's good enough for me, right? That's close enough, good enough for me to just like. So that, that's the my point is that what happens now that you're going to be dealing with a backup QB at Texas because with the starter, I think. And the other thing that I think needs to be accounted for is that with sprinkling in Avery Johnson at Kansas State as a really mobile quarterback, one has to think that they have not fully unleashed everything. I mean, he's almost exclusively ran the football. I'm expecting Avery Johnson to pass the ball at least three times in this game, probably on like fake runs and throw it, try and throw something over Texas's head. I think uh, Chris Clayman pulls out the stops and and plays this one hard. I just don't know if it's enough. That's the only, I, I think this is going to be a barn burner of a game, but give me the give me Texas to win at home. I think the crazy di- dichotomy of this is, is the fact that like Houston just gave Texas a hard time and Kansas State just blew the crud out of Houston just like this last week. Um, so it makes you kind of give a little pause of like, uh, what should I expect? What should I see? But uh, honestly, I'm, I think Texas, I- I've been against Sarkeesian. I feel like Sarkeesian loses you games. I feel like Sarkeesian calls a good game in this one. They lean on the run, they lean on their defense, and they end up pulling it out in this one. So I'm picking Texas to win. Yeah, I'm like you, though. If if Quinn Ewers was playing, Texas by a lot. I think this is comfortable, yeah. I agree. Uh, Brian is on K-State, so he is uh, zigging where we zag. Uh, to another fun one, uh, Ole Miss hosts the Texas A&M Fighting Aggies. Um, Jimbo Fisher kind of coaching for his job at this point. Ole Miss kind of hoping and, and hanging on for dear life, hoping that Ole Miss – or not Ole Miss, that LSU does them a solid and beats Bama and gives them a chance to go to the SEC title game. How do you see this one playing out? Even if Ole, even if uh, LSU beats Bama and gets let's Ole Miss in, they've got to beat Georgia. That's not going to happen. But, um, yeah, this Texas A&M defense scares me a little bit, but it's at home. And, I mean, Ole Miss has found ways to win. I'm get, picking Ole Miss to win this one. Yeah, I've got Ole Miss winning this one as well. I think that they're going to be able to pick on AM secondary. Uh, i got to sneeze. Hang on a second. Sorry about the dead airwaves there. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> pardon me. Um, I, I think everyone who's wanted a piece of the A&M secondary has got it. I think Lane Kiffin's one of the better guys at, at doing that. So, um, plus they're, they're at home. Uh, give me the Rebels to win, and I think it's minus four. I think I think they cover yeah, that. Yeah, they're minus three, right? For I see on sports. Minus three now. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, from one 
coach uh, coaching for his job to another coach that I'm not sure wants his job anymore. Notre Dame going to Clemson. Um, man, the vibes around these two programs, I, I feel, has got to be very different. It looks like Notre Dame's kind of right the ship. They had, you know, obviously a, a disappointing game against Ohio State. But outside of that, they've had a really, really good year. Um, and they're going to Clemson, who's having a nightmare season relative to the last 10 years or so. Uh, but this one, I like, I, in a vacuum, I would say Clemson wins this game at home. Given all of the... I mean, and I don't know, is Shipley going to play? Like, I, I, I don't know that. I know that he's, he's left he's with injury. I don't feel like he's Is the better he? running back anyway right now. I mean, yeah, it's it's weird to watch. Like, it, it feels like he's, I mean, he's a good player, but I do feel like he's he's regressed in the last little bit. And I don't know if it's all his fault, right? The offensive line he's working with is, is not what it has been the last couple of years. Um, so, like, in a vacuum, I would have said, I think Clemson wins this game, but I think the Irish get this done. And you're talking about a Clemson team in November with a losing record. Hey. What do you think, Corey? I, I have gone back and forth on this game because the turnover variance has got to, at some point in time, swing over to Clemson's. Yeah, level out side. a little. But their quarterback play is not impressive to me. Their defensive line is pretty good, but they some teams were able to run on them too. So it's like, and it's is is it at Notre Dame? It's it, it's in Clemson. It's in it's Death Valley. Clemson. Give me Clemson to win. Okay. I, I think this one's interesting because I see this as a close game. And usually in close games, there's a few things that end up kind of swinging it one way or another, right? The team mm-hmm. that makes the less less mistakes. I Right now, trust Notre Dame to make fewer mistakes, even though they 100%. sent 10 people on the field a couple times against Ohio State in a really close game. Uh, the other thing is special teams and kicking. And I do not trust Clemson's kicking situation at all. So that's where I, I lean Notre Dame on that I can't one. imagine why not. Yeah, I know. It's yeah, only a I walk-on. Uh, yeah, just, just uh, and not even just a walk-on. A walk-on that wasn't playing five, six weeks ago. <laughs> um, you know, I'm sure they'll make another, like, uh, Disney Channel movie uh, on this one. They did one with uh, with Ray McElrathby. Uh, anyway, Um Brian is with me in choosing the the Fighting Irish to win the game in Clemson, South Carolina. Um, We've talked about how weird things go down in the desert. And fresh off of a very demoralizing loss, Utah has to make the trek to the southwest (laughs) to, uh, to Tempe to take on Arizona State. They are in Tempe, right? I'm going to say that, and as soon as I do, I'm questioning whether I, I'm or not. I'm guessing so. I'm pretty sure that's where Arizona State is. But I, will you look that up for me? I'm not going to look it up right now. That. It's in Metro Phoenix. So what does it say? No, that can't be right. It's in Tempe. It's in Tempe. It is? Okay. Yeah. All right. As, like, as soon I as they said it, I was They like, have four campuses. Apparently, there's one in Phoenix. That's what they're saying. Oh, yeah. yeah it's a in a couple satellite campuses. Okay. So, anyway, we've talked about wild things happening in the desert. Arizona State, fresh off of a conference win over Washington State. What happens here when Arizona State plays Utah? Kenny Dillingham, is he's, a, he's a coach there now, right? Yeah. Dude, he's got a good offensive mind. They find a way to get something done. I know they couldn't score against Washington, but I'm picking them over Utah. Dilly dilly. Um uh, I I want to go there with you. The problem don't, that I have Utah's is favored that by eleven. Don't you, don't even do it. <laughs> what? So Utah's favored by eleven. Don't do it. But I I just want to go with it. Well, the, the the real thing that happens in this game is that Arizona State doesn't have an offensive line. Yeah. And or, Utah or has a really good defensive line. Um, they have some pieces that I really like watching play. I've talked about that on the on the pod here. I think that they probably keep this closer. I wonder how Utah bounces back from uh, from from this loss, uh, just knowing that now the most of their goals for the remainder of the year are kind of out of reach. Like they're going to make a bowl, but 
you know, you're not going to be in the Pac-12 championship game, or at least it's a very slim possibility. Um, so I, I think this is closer than that, but yeah, give me the Utes. I, I really would love to see Dillingham pull this one off and really kind of start to build some momentum toward the end of the year. Um, we t- Air Force and Army, we've talked about... Um, talked about Air Force and kind of what what the future holds in store for them. This is not a conference game, of course, uh, but they are playing the Black Knights from West Point. This one's really simple. Air Force is good. Army is not that good. Give me the Falcons to win. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, Army just lost to UMass, so no offense, but... And they didn't score yeah. against LSU, so... Give me Air Force. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brian that one to me seems it, pretty open way. and shut. Brian also, yeah, and I should, did I say Brian was also with Utah on, on the last one? I may have not included that. Apologies, Brian. Um, now to a game that last year no one going into it thought it would be competitive, but it ended up being the biggest test that Georgia faced all last year was on the road in Columbia against the Tigers of Missouri. Uh, now they play in Sanford Stadium in Athens. Um, I see how you've already just filled in exactly what you're, you're just anticipating my pick here. Um, and, and you're not wrong. Um, I wish then I, what I would give to see Mizzou pull this one off. Um, especially since I felt like they let one, they let one get away from them when they lost to LSU. I felt like they, uh, you know, were leading and, and had, I think a 10 point lead in the fourth quarter against LSU yep. and, and let them off the hook. Um, I, I just don't see that Georgia defense is so good. And I, I just think Mizzou will struggle to score. I, I think, I, I don't know what the line is on this one, but 15, I, uh, 15 I, I, I think Georgia covers that line. Me um, too. So give me the Bulldogs. You do too. Yeah, uh, Brian is right there with us on that. Yeah, I think that that one's one. Another one of those where it's like it, it's kind of close, but or, or the the line indicates that the game should be kind of close. But I see this playing out much like the Kentucky and Florida games did, where yeah, the I, line's I, I close it, and Georgia feels disrespected and they reassert themselves as the best. Yeah, I see it kind of like the like the Florida game, like a forty two seventeen twenty game. Yeah, so nice. All right, um, Penn State at Maryland. Penn State, not exactly an inspiring performance against Indiana this past week. Now they go on the road to a Maryland team that's looking to bounce back after a loss to Northwestern. I- I'm not going to outthink the room here. Penn State's not a great team. They're a very good team, uh, and Maryland is is fine, but uh, they- they're- there are levels to this. And give me Penn State to go on the road and win. Yeah, I want Maryland to win this game, but Penn State's going to win it. So, all right, all right. Um, here, this this one is the one that takes the cake, right? Uh, Bedlam. I I'm. Are you pissed that this isn't a night game? Like, why on earth is this so, yeah. not a night game? Yeah, it should. This be. this should be a night game, it's as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I'm disappointed in that. I'm just going to lead with that. Um, Oklahoma on the road. This line no, seems... Is Oklahoma home? No. It's in Stillwater. Oh, we listed it. Okay, we listed that wrong. Oh, we, yeah, we have it listed wrong. It's 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 in Stillwater. Oklahoma is the, okay. is the road team. Uh, sorry about that. I think that was... Really I good. typed that wrong. Um I wonder how much of this is kind of an overreaction to Oklahoma losing this last week. And also, maybe not an overreaction, but just recalibrating what Oklahoma State is after they've had two pretty impressive wins in a row. The Sooners are going to win this game. I think they're going to be up for it. If anything, the loss this last week shows that maybe the eyes of the Sooners were a little too focused on this game. Uh, and, and maybe looked a little bit past Kansas. Um, so in that case, you better cash it in if you're Oklahoma, and I, I think they do. So give me the Sooners to win in Stillwater, um, even though I would love to see Oklahoma State win this game and just kind of, you know, 
two two birds to the sky as as Oklahoma leaves for the SEC and and effectively stops the uh, uh, the Bedlam game at least for the foreseeable future. Um, Ollie Gordon the second has had in the last four games. Let's go back through his four games. 271 yards versus Cincinnati, 282 yards versus West Virginia, 168 versus Kentucky, and 136 versus, uh, versus KSU. It's something that that Oklahoma is going to have to be aware of and pay attention, but they're going to stop it. Oklahoma wins. What's he – sorry, you said Kentucky? Was, was that – Did I say – I meant Kansas. Did I say Kentucky? Kansas, Kansas State. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. No, no, no worries. I was just like Kansas and then Kansas, hey, was... Kansas State. Sorry, um, if we're going okay. backwards. So, but yeah, um, Oklahoma only allows 132 yards per game rushing to any teams. They've played some decent rushing teams in Texas and UCF. They win. Oklahoma wins. So, all right, Brian's calling for the upset. He says he the Pokes get it done. He basically calls for an upset of Texas and Oklahoma State effectively ruining or and Oklahoma effectively ruining the Red River Shootout that we get to see again. So, oh, he he's calling for that. I wonder if he's voting with his heart or his head here. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll let him speak maybe, maybe for himself next week. I don't know where he's at. <laughs> yeah. Um, another game we talked about that one being kind of a de facto play-in game for the Big 12 title game. Um, this isn't quite that, but there is a matchup this weekend that will do a large part in deciding one of the participants in the ACC championship game, and that is when Virginia Tech, yes, Virginia Tech playing a crucial game when it comes to deciding the ACC championship game this year. A little bit surprising. Not historically. Historically, they've almost always been in that game, but in the last little bit, things have been rough, but they travel to Louisville. Uh, those are the only two teams with one loss in conference. And, of course, you've got Florida State uh, that's currently undefeated in conference. But the winner of this game then has the inside track to face Florida State in the title game. What would be a rematch should Virginia Tech make it? Um, but Louisville has yet to face, does not face Florida State in the regular season. So that would be their first matchup in the championship game. Louisville's at home. Corey, what, what do you think here? I think that Virginia Tech has found something with that new quarterback, Drones. Uh, he's mobile. He doesn't turn the ball over. He's seven touchdowns, one interception. Um, and I think they get it done. They are not favored. They're 10-point dogs almost. And I pick Virginia Tech, though, to win this game. On the road. That's awesome. On the road. Uh, the, the vibes the- have got to be great. They just blew out Syracuse this last week. And they are coming off a little bit of extra rest. They played Thursday. So they have a couple of extra days to get ready. Um, you're right. You you have to pack a lunch when you come to tackle uh, Kyron Drones, especially when he gets going because he's a big guy. Um, I don't know if it matters that much. I, I think that they've got uh, just they're, – they're, I think, a few years away. But I think Brent Pry has done – the tone around that program has shifted from the month of September to the month of October. Yes. And so good on them good on them for not mailing in the rest of the season. Give me the Cardinals. I think that they win, but I do think that one's uh, one where you're going to see sort of a championship level atmosphere and, and, and that kind of desperation from both teams. So uh, excited to see that one play out on, on Saturday. Tulane travels to face the East Carolina Pirates. Um, Again, I've told you, I have not paid very close attention to the American American Conference as a whole this year. I feel like I'm way more plugged into the Sun Belt, to Conference USA, and to a lesser extent, the Mountain West. But I, I don't know anything about this. I'm just picking Tulane blindly because they're the best team in the conference. Uh, on the road, that, that may matter. Um, East Carolina, I don't think, is particularly, uh, particularly good this, this year, year, so that's... Yeah. Uh, so yeah, give me Tulane. Yeah, give me Tulane. Uh, that East Carolina team is not good. They played a hard schedule. I mean, you played Marshall, you played Michigan, but we found out Marshall's not that good. And you lost them at, at Rice and SMU, but you also lost to Charlotte, ten to seven. So like, yeah, give me uh, Tulane. Okay. 
um, to to a game that I feel like I, I understand a little bit more of the dynamics that are going on. Uh, like I mentioned, a little bit more uh, better versed in the Sun Belt than than the American. Uh, James Madison, Georgia State, Georgia State coming off of a pretty disappointing loss to Georgia Southern, where they, uh, you know, I think they were one and a half point underdogs according to according to odds makers, but they ended up losing that game pretty handily. Like, kind of got humbled by Georgia Southern, uh, and now they face the class of the conference in James Madison. They are at home, uh, are, are the Georgia State Panthers. Uh, I don't think that matters. Give me the JMU Dukes, who have done nothing but run roughshod over everyone that they play. Uh, they that's, that's a great team, and it's fun to see those uh, some of those like FCS teams that were playing well at that level make the jump and then prove that they can compete at a higher level. Yeah, for me, it's JMU until it's not. So I'm going to ride the coattails of JMU until they decide to <laughs> fall apart. Like last year, they, they, they got ranked, and then they lost twice uh, right after they got ranked. This year, they've managed to keep that ranking and they continue to move up the polls. So. Awesome. Awesome. Oregon, uh, after beating Utah, now plays host to Cal. Uh, Cal coming off of a one- or two-point loss at home to USC. Uh, in a game that had far too many points, um, I yeah, I just don't see a path to victory for Cal um, unless Oregon's really uh, really reading their press clippings after last week, and I just don't think Dan Lanning's going to allow for that. Uh, Oregon wins this game. Yeah, Cal uh, has not given up under thirty points except for like once this year. <laughs> like, I'm Thanks. looking back. Real quick, do their their thing, their schedule. I'm trying to check. Um, okay, so minus the Auburn game, um, and, and then like the early games, North Texas and Idaho. But since the games have mattered, Washington, Arizona State, Oregon State, Utah, you give up thirty something points to Utah. Yeah, you're gonna lose to to Oregon. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's it's that's really strange because Justin Wilcox, their head coach, is like a defensive minded. You know, def- he was a defensive coordinator for a, for a good while, a defensive coach by trade. Um, but yeah, Cal just doesn't maybe doesn't have the horses to go around. Corey, what does Iowa or what does Kansas do for an encore uh, heading to Ames to to play the Iowa State Cyclones? Uh, can they keep the positive vibes rolling? Nope, they fall flat. I think they actually. Everything's going that way, and then all of a sudden, Iowa State kind of puts like a damper on it. I think Iowa State's uh, offense is just going to be too strong. Um, they've got something with their quarterback in Brecht, and so I expect them to win. I actually I agree with you. We didn't talk about that one. I I'm right there with you. I think Iowa State wins. Brian is the contrarian here. Uh, how about that? You and I uh, several times have agreed when Brian has 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 yeah. dissented. I don't know if this is good for me. It's probably not. It's probably not because I'm the guy who always loses all of these contests and predictions. So um, you've been. So, I think you've yeah. been killing lately, though. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I think the Cyclones win as well. Um, all right, with the bye week, all of the chatter around the Michigan program has been sign stealing. One thing they haven't had to steal is wins because they've just been earning them right and left. Now Purdue comes to town. They're playing Michigan. I think all of the chatter and the outside noise has galvanized this Michigan team. I don't know what the what the spread is. It's probably a really big number, thirty two and a half. I might even like I might lay them. I think Michigan's going to make a statement um, and just kind of be like, we don't care what you, what y'all think. We're just out here killing teams, and the signs wouldn't make a difference. Um, so give me Michigan to win and to win big. Um, Purdue are major, major underdogs. They're two and six this year, but they're also world shockers. But it's not today. Uh, Michigan wins. <laughs> the showmanship here. We got to get you on game day with that kind of not so fast, my friend. Energy you're giving off. You um, this is another big one. This is the night game here. Uh, Southern Cal, after surviving a nail biter against Cal, including a, a pretty big comeback in that game in Berkeley, now returns home to host the Huskies of Washington. 
this game, I think there will be points of plenty. It sure won't be boring. What do you think? Uh, where do you see this one playing out? Washington has made themselves more vulnerable than I think any of us expected the last two weeks. I mean, you give up 33 Agreed. to Stanford. You only score 15 against Arizona State. The problem is, it's like we haven't seen the same team. Like against Arizona State, they turned the ball over a ton. Against Stanford, uh, were there turnovers in that game? I'm I'm yet to be able to rewatch that. So um. I, I watched it. I can't remember anything major. Um, but USC and beating Cal because of a lucky interception and the fact that Cal can convert on a two point conversion. Um, Washington has a defense that can actually stop like Caleb Williams a few times, and so I'm going to pick Washington to to win. I think the line's three and a half. I, that sounds about the right number to me. It's going to be – and every other time I bet on USC to win or cover this year, they have failed to do so, so I'm going Washington. <laughs> sort of the I, – I just don't trust them because they never work out for me. Exactly. Um, I – I think I think Washington wins this game. Um, it'll be interesting to see what how how they travel because I think to this point they really haven't had that many. Um, let's see here. Have they really they even had that many tests. And at Arizona, yeah, in the last few weeks. And the Arizona game was was close. Yeah, I mean they 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 did their job in that game. Um, yeah, I. I mean, it'll it'll be as tough an environment as the Coliseum is. Which, throwing shade here, I I don't get the sense that that place is an intimidating place to play for people, um, for for teams on the road. At least not not most. There's there's a lot of tarps over seats in there. Is all I'm gonna say. Um, yeah, I think the Huskies score this game is again. I think the first person or the first team to score about fifty-five will win. I'm joking. It's probably more like forty-five that that you need to to, to score to win. So, um, I I like the Huskies to to outscore. I mean, they have an offense, whereas with USC, it's more like Caleb Williams freelancing and 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 trying offense. to make things happen on the cuff. What I mean, yeah, it's it's a fine offense, but it just it takes one or two turnovers and and that you know one or two empty possessions in this game might lose you the game. So for what it's worth, um, uh, ESPN Analytics favors USC, and so does Brian. So all the more reason for me to go Huskies. Um, so yeah, I I'm taking Washington. Yeah, you you got to be sweating bullets now that you see the number of them that you and I agree on that Brian doesn't. Is, you've got to be really nervous, and I just kind of like, hey, this, this is who I am. Um, you kind of tipped your cap on this next one. LSU heads to Tuscaloosa. Brian Kelly 1-0 and versus Nick Saban as an SEC head football coach. Of course, they played uh, when, when he was at Notre Dame. Different story. But um, you you mentioned you think LSU is going to go out and win this game. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, how do you see it playing out? I mean, in reality – Milrow doesn't have the arm to take advantage of LSU's uh, weakness in the secondary. I mean, he, he has an arm. Don't get me wrong, but it's not going to beat them multiple, multiple times. Um, and you can collapse down on the run and just focus on stopping the run and stopping Milrow. And for that reason, and also the fact that Jaden Daniels will score bunches of points, even against a great defense, they're going to find ways to scheme up out points. Um, I have LSU winning. This is the one that I keep going back and forth on because I can see a world where this is really fascinating because I, I think you've got strength going versus strength and weakness versus weakness where you've yeah. got Alabama's offense has not been much to write home about. I mean, they, they're, they're getting things done. They're doing enough to win, but really not. I wouldn't consider that the strength of the team and LSU's defense, particularly, like you said, in, in the secondary is a real problem. But not that many people have, you know, have the the right mix of roster talent and and scheme to to take advantage of it. Um, so I I chose Alabama to get to the title game. I think they can lose this game and still get there. Um, 
because I don't know if LSU, between this game, uh, hosting Florida, and then are they on the road at A&M or are they hosting A&M? I'm going to say they're on the road at A&M. I Let's think... Just guess. No, I think they're at home, actually, now that I think about it, because last year A&M beat them, and I think yep, they were... Yeah, they're home for the remainder of their games. Okay. So, I still am kind of going back and forth on this one, but, you know, you don't make a lot of money going against Nick Saban very often, so I am going to say Alabama wins it. Um, but I really could see that game going either way, and, and again, regardless of that result, I do expect Alabama to be in the title game just because I think LSU has a harder road. Um, yeah, hosting the Gators, hosting the Aggies is to me harder than home against Kentucky and then on the road at, at Auburn in the Iron Bowl. I mean, that Iron Bowl is going to be interesting for 10 minutes, I think. Auburn's not very good. like So uh, that, that's, that's how I see that playing out. So give me Bama. Ryan is also with you on LSU winning in Tuscaloosa. And how interesting would things be if Ryan Kelly is 2-0 and versus Nick Saban in two years? Yeah. Oof, yeah. That, that, things would start to get uncomfortable uh, in Tuscaloosa a little bit with, uh, with all They've the changes. They've only had one loss this year. I mean, it can't be that bad, uncomfortable. It's just they aren't going to but it's easy. But they didn't make the playoff last year. They lost, you know, that'd be three straight years of no national championship, no SEC championship. You, yep. You'd start to be like, okay, we and need to have a bounce back. Even in the West, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and then I think your defense, you're going to lose lots of guys off of it, and I don't know what – you know, what your offense is going to look like next year just yet. Obviously, you know, transfer portal windows will probably play a big factor in that. But looking at their roster, it's like, man, I don't think Jalen Miller is going to become like a world-class quarterback over one off season. Probably not. So yeah. who could you go get? We'll see. Malik Murphy didn't transfer, which is kind of crazy. Art Manning didn't transfer. I'm like, but one of them might this next year. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Anyway, that's, another conversation for another time but uh, i think things get really interesting if lsu ends up winning in tuscaloosa this weekend all right we got a couple more and then we'll wrap um oregon state loses to arizona last week now they go on the road yet again to play the buffaloes of colorado um can what do you think does 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 prime and the uh, yeah do prime and the buffaloes rewrite the ships do they get back in the win column after having a couple of losses in a row i think this game is going to be tight but as it's going to be very very few possessions but i think oregon state wins this um it should matter about matter about dju not turning over the ball and shador them getting pressure on shador and actually like making him uncomfortable still so yeah styles make fights i think this is a really interesting clash of styles um where one team is uh, a little bit more up tempo, spreads the ball out, throws the ball around the yard. The other is much more. All right, we want two or three tight ends in the game. We're gonna run at you, throw off play action. Um, yeah, like I'm really close to picking Colorado on this one. Yeah, uh, this one's difficult. I I think the Beavers get it done, but. Yeah, give, give me Oregon State. It's by that. It's to me, this is razor thin margins. Um, uh, uh, following up on kind of the the fallout from it's funny because these two, Colorado and Oregon State now play this week when Oregon State played Arizona and Colorado played UCLA and UCLA and Arizona also play each other. So they just kind of yeah. this little round robin between those four. Uh, Arizona hosts UCLA. Uh, back-to-back road or back-to-back home games rather for the Wildcats positive vibes all around five and three opportunity to clinch a bowl against a ranked UCLA team they are ranked right I said that and now I'm like they're six yeah, and two, right? ranked. yeah 18 ish somewhere in that ballpark we've been doing all the ranked games too so let me pull it off real quick yeah so it's it's got to be right yeah yeah, uh, UCLA are... is 20. Right now it's yeah. 20. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. This one just doesn't feel like the right matchup for Arizona. I 
I would love to see them make some things happen. I just don't know if they can block it up against UCLA's defensive line. Um, against my better judgment, not against my better judgment, but against my heart, I'm going to choose the Bruins to win this game. I'm going to go with your heart. I'm choosing Arizona. I'm excited to oh, see them use. I hope. I hope you're right. I'm excited to see them use. What's his name? Nafita. Nafita. How do you say his last name? Noah Fifita. Noah Fifita. I'm. They're going to use his legs a lot more in this game, and he's going to prove that he can scramble and hit the passes on the run. And we're going to see Arizona upset UCLA, and we're going to see all of a sudden Arizona's like a legit contender within the Pac-12 a little bit. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have two losses in conference so like you'd need some some chaos to happen with oregon and washington specifically yep. but it's not it's not out of you know it's, yeah it's i'm not, not gonna say they're gonna make the title game but i think they're in that tier below where no you got, I, uh, they're gonna yeah, finish they're... i think well above what people pick them to so um and and this would be a big game for them to do that finally our last game that we're gonna pick byu versus west virginia um, you know, obviously we've got a pretty solid group of, of BYU fans that listen to the pod. Uh, we're all BYU alumni, uh, heading all the way to basically to the East coast, to West Virginia, to play the Mountaineers who've had a pretty surprising season. Um, how do you see this one playing out, Corey? BYU is, is not a good team. I've said this multiple times. They've, they've got two more wins than they should probably. And they're going to get a third. This team is just feeling lucky this year, and they're going to get a, become bowl eligible this year, this this game. So I pick a BYU. So, yeah, here here's the way I see this playing out. BYU has a pretty good defense, right? It's not it's not a great defense. They take good away the score ball. points. That's what they do. That's where they've been beneficial. Is they take away the ball. And and West Virginia, like, I mean, I've only seen so much West Virginia this year. Um, but they have, yeah, they, they have at times been loose with the football. Garrett Green is, is kind of a gunslinger of a quarterback, will try and fit the ball into windows and uh, kind of is a, uh, plays with, with some, some abandon, some, some reckless abandon. Uh, and so there's opportunities for that. The other thing that I think you might end up seeing, like West Virginia has been pretty beat up on their on the defensive side of the ball, they've had lots of defensive starters like go out for the season, um, which I think BYU needs in order to, to move the ball against anyone. Like I am not a Keaton Slovis uh, believer. Uh, I, I think he's a fine teammate. I think he just throws the ball to the teams in the wrong colored jerseys way too often for my taste and has been the beneficiary of a lot of dropped interceptions too. Like it's been bad, but it could have been a lot worse um, so I, I think that they're able to keep it close, but I think West Virginia is the team that's celebrating going to a bowl at the end of this one. Um, and, and BYU still has to regroup and, and find a way to get notch that sixth victory, either against Iowa state, Oklahoma. Yeah. Right. O or Oklahoma state to close out the year. Um, so give me West Virginia. All right. All right. Um, so those are our picks straight up. We do have time for picks against the spread. We'll be accountable real quick on that. And I'll start, I'll just pull up Brian so he can be accountable first. Um, last week, he, you know, as you remember, two weeks ago, went six and O oh on his picks. Uh, well, he fell back down to earth. Uh, he chose Texas A&M minus 14, which did not uh, against South Carolina, that didn't uh, cash. West Virginia plus eighteen and a half. I don't remember who they played last week. Um, oh, West oh, sorry, it's a win. It's Virginia. Virginia plus eighteen and a half versus Miami. Excuse me. I'm sorry, yeah. I read that wrong. Um, he also got the Oklahoma State minus seven and a half. Um, he lost OSU Wisconsin over forty three and a half. Uh, UGA Florida under forty eight and a half was a loss. And then Utah plus seven. Woof. Um, so not a great week for him last week. Um, should I just go ahead and read his picks for this week too? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So this week's picks, he has Missouri plus 16 versus Georgia. So he's taken Missouri and the points. 
He is taking Oklahoma State plus six. Uh, I think he had them winning the game outright as well, so I he guess did. that makes sense. Um, Kansas plus two and a half against Iowa State. He has uh, them winning as well. Yeah, he's got yeah, uh, he's got them winning again. The LSU Bama over sixty. I kind of like that play too. Yeah, I like that one. Um, so that that's an interesting one. He's got Boston College plus two and a half, and I do not know who Boston College is playing. Boston, Boston. Boston College plays. Let me check real quick. I was looking at that one myself. Um, Syracuse. Oh yeah, that's. Wow, how are they not favored in that game? Is it at Syracuse? It's at Syracuse, yeah. I don't know if I care. Um, that's interesting. All right, so and then finally, Nebraska minus three versus. Rutgers, uh, I think. No, Rutgers is playing Michigan Ohio State. State. Michigan State versus Michigan State. Okay. Yeah. All right, so those are Brian's uh, picks. Sorry, he just sent me the team, so I, I should have been prepared and known who their opponents were. Uh, Corey, do you want to go next? Yeah, so last week I went – or the, two weeks ago I went 1-5. and five. I'm improving a little bit. I went 3-3 three and three this last week. I picked FSU over, over Wake to cover 20 and a half. They ended up winning by significant margin. I thought Duke – I picked Duke over Louisville. That was not even close. Um, USC over Cal by 10 and a half wrong again told you every time i bet on usc i'm wrong um auburn mississippi state the under 43 and a half i was right i think they only hit 30 points in that game um maybe it was 40 it was 40 points in that game a uh, washington state versus uh arizona state under 51 i missed uh, both thought both teams couldn't play and all of a sudden both offenses showed up in that game and made it a shootout <laughs> um boston college <clears throat> minus one and a half versus uconn and i picked boston college to win that one um so Got three right, got three wrong. This week, I'm picking LSU plus three over, versus Bama. Um, Kentucky minus four versus Mississippi State. I'm hoping uh, Devin Leary continues to, the form he's in, and that Mississippi State team can get got in that in with their pass defense. Um, I'm picking Clemson over Notre Dame, so I'll take the points plus three. Georgia Tech versus uh, Virginia. So this game is being played on the CW. If you go back at the last few weeks on the CW – why they play games on the CW, nobody knows. So if you go back, Saturday, uh, October 14th, Pitt beats Louisville, you know, undefeated Louisville on the CW. Go back two weeks ago, October 21st, Virginia beats North Carolina 31-27. North Carolina is number 10 in the nation. Go back last week, NC State beats Clemson 24-17. There's some crazy things that happen on the CW. George Tech isn't favored, but I'm picking them to win at, and plus one and a half as well. Um, my next game is Arkansas versus U or versus UF. Arkansas is coming off a bye week. Week they fight. I just fired Dan Enos. They turn the reins over to Kenny Gitan, the 32 year old wide receiver coach, um, who's kind of been moving up the ranks a little bit. Is it Geaton or Guyton? I don't know how to say his name. I'm not gonna. I'm just like curious. It. All right, but I'm picking Arkansas plus six versus UF, making UF very, very, very tricky way to qualify for a bowl game. I mean, they could still win, and you can still cash your bet. Exactly. So I'll take it. Um, I was interested to see what kind of offense he actually runs with the the tools that they do have. Because I think if you'd have gone beginning of the year, Arkansas might have been favorite. This might have been a a split, like a a pick them. Um, but we'll see. My last pick is Florida State minus twenty two versus Pitt. I think they're gonna blow Pitt out of the water. Um, I don't think it's gonna be even close. So those are my six. Yeah, we got some Pat over Narduzzi's comments were about his players and they'll quit, you know. So. As soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, look at that line and and decide what you want there. Um, sorry, what is the current spread there? Because I I had made these notes, but I think there's been some line movement. Of I had late, 22 so. for Florida State. The last okay, time I saw perfect. Them. I will. I'm just gonna amend some of my picks here. Oh, I guess before before I get into those, let me be accountable for this last week. Now, this last week for for uh, for our listeners that listen to every episode number one thank you number two um i chose six and then was told i had to only choose six and i had three others that i liked um so of the six that were my official like all right these are my choices i was three and three all right army minus 10 versus umass umass actually won the game outright yikes learned my lesson army's just not not the army team that they've been in the last three or four years where they've you know been winning uh like between eight and ten games, they they did some great things 
little little fall from grace for Army. Uh, Ohio State minus 14 and a half versus Wisconsin. Had opportunities to stretch that game. Uh, didn't do it. Um, Georgia State plus one and a half at Georgia Southern. We talked about that earlier. That was, you know, uh, disappointing outcome and, and was pretty apparent within a couple of series that they were not physically superior along the lines of scrimmage. Uh, so that was also a loss. Those three all were losses. And then FSU minus 20 and a half at Wake. That was that cashed. Kansas State minus 17 versus Houston cashed very easily. Texas minus 17 and a half versus BYU. Same story. So three and three on those. Now I did add three picks. Uh, they don't and count, with so this, it doesn't they matter. Don't, I went three and zero on them. I'm calling them out real quick. I, a couple I told you so's as Brian called them last week. Texas A&M versus South Carolina under fifty three and a half. That was like I think the they finished the total there. I think the total is forty seven. So it wasn't like super close. Um, North Carolina State versus Clemson under forty four. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, twenty four seventeen was the final there. Uh, and then USC Cal over, I got it at 63 and a half because it was super early. It got that up all the way to 67 and there was what, 98 points in that game. So didn't, didn't matter. It wasn't, wasn't one that was, it was really ever in jeopardy. So, uh, yeah, so three and three on the official picks last week. All right. For this week, I am going back to the well with Florida state. Again, I think this is like a, oh, the pit players, like you're going to sit here and say that we suck. Well, if we suck, maybe we just don't give any effort. Um, so FSU, and I checked the weather. The weather looks like it's going to be cold, but no, like, crazy conditions. So FSU minus 22.5 at Pitt. Um, Nebraska minus 3 versus Michigan State. Brian had that one. It was also on mine. Um, here's one that I, I might need to see what it is again. Uh, Washington versus USC. What's the point total on that one? Um, 76.5. Yeah. To okay. Game. Yep. Uh, give me the over. Uh, I just, I, I think that that game's played in the forties. Um, I, I had this one as a play or as a possible, and I think I just deleted the wrong one. I had Arizona plus one and a half, but I'm not gonna take that. So I might need to find a the sixth one. Uh, you and I agree on Kentucky minus four at Mississippi State. I am taking Colorado plus the 13 against Oregon State. I think that's a closer game than that. I don't know what that – check that point to, or that spread to make sure that that's, that's current. Plus 13. That was, yeah. Plus 13. Okay. Give me Colorado to cover at home uh, with that one. Um, and I, I do – I suppose I need another uh, – I see the line right it. now for – you're talking about Arizona, UCLA? Yeah. It's plus three right now for Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I still like I still had that as one of my possible. I think I deleted the other one that I was going to choose. So I'm trying to scroll through and try and find it here. So um, while you're doing that, I I was just kind of talking about or yeah. was thinking of like I think it'd be fun to get into uh, like data modeling and and coming up with our own projections of how we should how these things things would work. It may be something I might tinker with in in the off season, but I might imagine it's pretty dang hard. So. Oh, here it is. Yeah, uh, SMU minus twelve versus Rice. Uh, give me SMU. Um, yeah, they're gonna win that game by two touchdowns at least. So that is gonna be my last one um, for this week. So let me put that one down. I think another I sense one that I looked at going on. What? I sense two and four with your picks going on right now. <laughs> yeah, may, may, maybe um, another sneaky one that I I think is, is quite interesting. Um, Miami, North Carolina State, like, there's there's a couple ways that you could approach this game. Uh, NC State is, uh, is being given four points at home. It's a little surprising. I think the under is the move here. It's 45 and a half. Tyler Van Dyke has not played very well the last little bit. I don't trust North Carolina State's offense to do much. I bet you that game is played in the teens. So, um, who's, the, who's the quarterback and the, and the offensive coordinator of NC State again? Uh, the quarterback is now MJ Morris. Yeah, because I said <laughs> the offensive court. Yeah, I, okay, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Uh, they sat Brandon Armstrong. It just wasn't working. I still think the weapons on the outside are problematic outside of Kevin Concepcion. Um, yeah. But that one, I would look at that under too. That's that's one. That, that, that's one not a bad play. I'm just assuming that, like, both defenses are. 
looked good. So it could be a tight one. And what has Miami played games? They haven't played. They haven't scored a lot of points in the last few games, have they? I no, mean, it's they've been. I mean, they scored twenty nine in this one in overtime, and then yeah, and again the, the Clemson game went to double overtime. Yeah. Well, so because they were at seventeen, like at full. I think was they? it double overtime? Yeah, it was Clemson? double overtime. I can't remember they now. They were tied seventeen yeah. at that. At the end. That's right. That's um, right. So yeah, we're looking yeah. at any points being scored for them. So I think the end is the move there. Um. Yeah. It, anything else that we need to cover before we wrap up? Um, mom we love you yeah thanks for listening mom and anyone else that's that's listening this deep into the pod um yeah looking forward to another week uh, appreciate all of the support and uh, again feel free to like share subscribe all the good stuff and we will see you for our week 10 recap next week this has been cfb paint that's Corey. this is steve and we'll see you next time